What's up guys, Subzeric here, and welcome to my Dragon Mancer Nunu guide. This has been one of the most controversial comps of the patch, a ton of people complaining about it, a ton of people also want to use it for free LP, so I thought I'd give you guys a guide on how to play it. Um, it is going to get nerfed next patch. Um, here are the nerfs, and I'll go a little bit more into the, the rest of the nerfs after this. Um, but I guess the biggest question a lot of people will be asking is, do I think this comp is going to be dead after these nerfs? And no, I don't think so. I just don't think it's going to be a comp that you hard force uh, from any position, auto win, um, if you get certain things. Um, I think the comp will still be playable. These are, all things considered, not that heavy of nerfs. 100 HP at 6 Dragon Mancer, 1000 base HP, or 200 base HP at 8 Dragon Mancer, and 5 base AP uh, at 8 Dragon Mancer. Um, all things considered, those are big nerfs, but I don't think they're enough to completely get rid of the comp. I think uh, Riot has actually done a good job recently, uh, especially with this patch. They're really trying to not do the balanced thrashing where something is really good and then it's unplayable. They want it to go from really good to, you know, just just good um, so that you can still play it, just not force it for a free win. Um, the other nerf is that Nunu's damage threshold uh, the threshold for his damage amp is getting nerfed, and if this is a little bit confusing to you, it'll help to read Nunu's ability. Um, so this is the threshold where if the target has less current health than he does, uh, it deals an additional percentage of damage. So when the when the target has less health, it's only going to do 20% more damage uh, as opposed to 33% more damage, which is a relatively uh, big nerf to this as well. Um, as compensation buffs for the Dragomancer nerf, uh, some of the other Dragomancers are getting buffed, like Volibear is getting actually a pretty big buff, uh, Kaisa is getting, you know, a relative, a relatively small buff, but a buff nonetheless. Um, there's even a buff to Karma uh, further down here. They're only at three star, and same with Set at three star, which often in this comp you aren't hitting these at three star. Um, and a small nerf to Lee Sin. But overall, um, net buffs to some of the Dragon Mancers, the Volley Bear and uh, Karma buffs are the big one that I'm looking at, but nerf to the trade itself. Um, so I think the comp will still be playable in the new patch. Um, so I wanted to give you guys a rundown on rundown on how to actually play it, what you do when you have a Dragon Dragon Mancer spat, and the best way to play the game. So first I'm going to go through some early game comps that you can play that don't require Nunu. I think the one thing a lot of people uh, have trouble with in this comp is, okay, what do I do without Nunu? Um, and it's a sort of sy systematic problem um, with people who are beginners to TFT, is you tunnel vision on one version of a comp, you tunnel vision on, okay, this is my six Dragon Mancer Nunu, and then I have two Cavaliers, and that's my level eight board. Well, how do you get there? What do you do after that? That is the really important stuff in TFT. Smoothly getting to a strong Dragon Mancer Nunu board will guarantee you get that first or second, as opposed to, oh, I got to Dragon Mancer Nunu board, but I had 30 HP, so then I ended up dying, uh, and I went out in sixth or, you know, fourth or something like that. So using boards like this uh, will be really helpful in preserving your HP, um, and also farming you up some gold in the case of this one. So here's an Astral's board that you can play. Um, it's just three Astral's plus one Dragon Mancer. It doesn't have to be Kai'Sa. I use Kai'Sa here because we want some backline damage, but it could as easily be Karma um, or, you know, if you hit Set, uh, Set as well. Um, so it, this is a very reasonable board you can play. Um, just put the Dragon Mancer emblem on Vladimir and probably Dragon Mancer him, though, you know, if you hit Karma too, then you can Dragon Mancer her. Um, Dragon Mancer gives HP and uh, AP. Vladimir uses both of those very, very well. So this is very straightforward. It's also an Astral opener. Astral is one of the strongest openers in the game. Uh, not because you want to actually play Astral reroll, but because you can use these units to generate you free econ. It generates one to two gold per round. That's That really adds up, especially when you want to play a comp like this. Oftentimes you want to play for lose streak um, because you want to try to find extra spats to hit Dragon Mancer uh, emblem or perfect items on... Uh, eventually your Nunu, but you know, right now in the game, it'll be your Vladimir. Um, so this is often a comp that you're going to be playing from Lost Streak. So a board like this will do a really good job at allowing you to lose Streak gracefully um, while still making a bunch of Econ and potentially killing some units. Um, so this is a very, very good comp to do that. Another one that you can use is sort of like a Lagoon comp. Um, this is also very fortunate because Kaisa is a Lagoon unit in herself, so there's just inbuilt synergy there. You can literally just play this Lagoon package, Dragon Mancer, whoever, really, just as a frontliner. Malphite is fine. Zack would be fine if you, you know, like, Hyrule. If you Hyrule Malphite 2-star, you Dragon Mancer it. But, you know, same thing if you Hyrule Zack 2-star. And then any Bruiser. Uh, Jax is one of the best Bruisers, so uh, very nice to play him. You can also, uh, after this, start looking for sources of damage. Oh, another thing about this comp. Um... You don't have to always transition straight to Nunu. You can just slowly make your board better. So very reasonable where you're playing this board here. 
uh, you end up finding a Lux a little bit later into the game, so you replace Nidalee with Lux. Um, now we have uh, two Mage, so your next level can very easily be a Silas. Um, and then you have a really, really gross board. You have three Mage in, you have two Bruiser in. Vladimir is doing a ton of work. You could even potentially move Dragon Mancer Emblem to Silas, um, so you can do something like this really well. And then, you know, as you push future levels, you can potentially uh, add more Dragon Mancers. So, you know, if you're playing this board and you got to level seven and you still hadn't found any Nunu, you could very easily add the Simplus Holy Bear and then just play this board for a little while. Um, until you find your Nunu. Eventually you want to transition to the Nunu, but the idea is make the transition as smooth as possible. Um, so similarly in this board, uh, you already have a pretty solid front line. I don't really want to play six Lagoon in this spot. So you can just start adding more backliners, um, more Dragomancers is, you know, a very easy way to improve all of these boards. So boom, add your Karma, add your set uh, for Dragomancer. Totally fine level six board. You can potentially look to pivot out of Malphite into someone else, um, you know, like if uh, you could potentially play Vladimir. He's a better carry than Malphite. But I mean, this board will have a strong front line and you can always just Dragon Mancer, Kaiser, Karma to have uh, extra damage as opposed to leaving it on Malphite just for front line. Really depends on the units that you two star, the items that you have, that kind of stuff. Um, so you always do want to be looking for best in slot, which I'll get into in a second once I get through uh, some of this early game stuff. Um, but yeah, a, a really important thing about this comp uh, is to play it from the early game. It's not a very easy comp to pivot into later um and that's because of these two units karma and set um these two units can be very hard to find late game because they're one costs and they're absolutely necessary for your build um so if you were thinking of playing this comp you do want to hold these units early and try to find them um so it's really a comp that you play from the early game you know if it's stage three two and you take a plus one dragon mancer augment um first of all it's usually only you're only going to get that if you have a few Dragon Mancers in, so that probably won't happen. But if you take like a, a spat at stage three carousel and try to make Dragon Mancer Emblem and you can't find Karma or Set, it's uh, it's kind of the nightmare scenario where you're rolling at level seven trying to find Karma and Set, which is just, it's not fun. Um, so I would really recommend if you're thinking about playing this comp, you really have to be prepared from the early game, whether that's just holding Karma or Set, finding them in the mid game and then playing them, or, uh, you know, very straightforwardly, just playing this comp in the early game with Karma and, you know, ideally you, you have set in somewhere over here, you know, have it in over this or, you know, eventually they get fully barren. But just having the Karma in set early, because if you miss those guys, it is, it's bad. It's bad. Um, the other thing is that when you're loose streaking, you can very easily pick up uh, spatulas. I guess this doesn't show components. Um, but if you play for Loose Streak, which the Lagoon Opener will help you do and the Astral Opener will help you do, you can play a very straightforward Loose Streak style, um, just play a sort of weak board, win some fights, um, but ideally just lose all the fights, really. Um, best best possible opener for this would be five really small losses, one unit, two unit losses. Um, you go to Carousel, find a Spatula, um, because uh, having two Dragomancer Emblems is really, really important in this comp, and I'll get into that a little bit later with some of the more late game comps. Um, but the thing about Dragon Mancer is that there are six natural uh, Dragon Mancers. Um, to get to eight, you need two Dragon Mancer. Um, so getting two Dragon Mancer spats allows you to hit that huge, huge power spike of plus 1,200 health, which is going to be nerfed next patch. But still, it's going to be a lot, plus 75 AP. It's a huge, huge buff. Uh, you know, the, the stats on eight Dragon Mancer, I could probably pull them up right now, and it's it's going to be nuts. So just, just for fun, let's uh, check out the traits stats for a Dragon Mancer. It averages at 2.61 and wins almost half the games it's in. That is absolutely insane. Um, so very, very, very good. Uh, if you can get those two spats, it uh, makes the game very, very straightforward. Um, just get to eight, play Dragon Mancers, and win from there. Um, so Loose Streak uh, is always preferred with this comp. Uh, if you lose multiple rounds in a row, you generate extra gold. So you really want to play for a multi, multiple Loose Streak uh, opener. So if you get three losses in the beginning, you need to scout other people's boards um, and make sure that you can lose to them. Uh, that's very important, especially if you go like a four loss streak, you really need to lose the fifth round um, to keep your loss streak because a five loss streak is worth three gold every single round. That is a ton of econ. Um, so I can't stress that enough. Uh, one more early game comp that you can play is Dragon Mancer says Ronnie. Uh, she actually carries this uh, very well. Um, and let me pull up uh, Jwani. Uh, in TFT because, uh, you know, there's not so much on that website. But the thing is, her ability scales with her maximum HP. Um, so she 
you know, as a unit that scales with max HP, scales very well with Dragomancer, giving you a ton of HP. Um, so, you know, I, I had a game quite a while ago where I got absolutely destroyed by a Sejuani 3. They had 3 start all their Dragomancers. Sejuani was just one-tapping my entire board. But she carries Dragomancer's bad very well, so you can easily do a level 4 board like this if you hit set Karma and Kaisa, play Sejuani with the Dragomancer's bat, and she can kill a ton of units. Um, so these are some very straightforward uh, boards that can lead you into what I would say is the bread and butter of this comp, which is just six Dragon Mancers with the spat on the Nunu. Um, and the two best in slot items by far are Bloodthirster and Hand of Justice. You want double healing um, because at the end of the day, you want your Nunu to be as healthy as possible so that he can eat as many units as he can. Um, he's going to get enough damage uh, from the Dragon Mancer to heal everything. So if he can just heal all of his HP up, uh, he'll be in a really, really good spot. The Bloodthirster helps a lot because, you know, he may take early aggro. Um, so the, the big shield is, is really useful for Nunu. Um, so these are insanely good items. Um, you want to go for this every game. And Loose Streaking can get you to these items very easily. Um, however, sometimes you're forced to build not best in slot items. One, one thing that you can do, actually, um, is these are, you know, the only items that really matter. After this, you can start looking at building items for potentially, like, Lee Sin which can also be like Yasuo items. Um, one thing you can do is build something um, like a Titan's Resolve, which is, you know, not perfect in slot on Nunu, but it's good enough. Uh, so if you have, you say, like a Titan's, Sol Titan's Resolve and a Bloodthirster, that's totally fine on Nunu. And then later game, you can build a Hodge. And if you have uh, an item remover, you can pop it off uh, and put the Hodge onto him and then move the Titan's Resolve to Lee Sin, which will eventually become Yasuo. Um, so Titan's Resolve is a totally fine item. Gunblade, another, you know, very strong healing item is fine. I've seen people put on fire on their Nunu. I wouldn't really recommend it, um, but if you have a remover, you know, you can just item hold Nunu for a little while. Warmogs, of course, gives a bunch of HP, so it's not too bad. Um, but ideally, you want these double healing items, but you can't, uh, especially if you have a remover, it's really nice to just put a couple items on Nunu and then eventually find these best items, because one of the biggest problems with this comp is people lose a lot of HP trying to greed for, you know, all the spatulas, all of the uh, best in slot components, and that's, I would say, like the biggest issue is that if you play super greedy, you're going to take a bunch of damage and die. Uh, what's a what's a casual level seven with this board? Because this comp uh, is a comp where generally if you want to roll, you roll on level seven um, because it's the highest odds for Nudu. Very easily, you know, you can play a Sejuani in the early game with, say, four Dragonmancer and then get the Sej in here um, just for the two Cavalier buff. Uh, and then at level eight, you can easily just play a Hecarim. Uh, he gets the Rage Wing buff offset, and he's a Cavalier, which is really, really nice. Um, like I was saying, ideally, you get multiple Dragon Mancer spats because uh, your ideal level 8 will be cut he well, cut the Sejuani, play Yasuo, and then Dragon Mancer spat your uh, Hecarim. And then boom, you have 8 Dragon Mancer. Huge, huge buff for Nunu. Uh, and then, I mean, your board will be incredibly strong. Um, so you need to find Yasuo plus these two Dragon Mancers if... You have three Dragon Mancer spats, which because uh, you can build them out of a spatula, it happens more frequently than you think. You can just do something like this and have eight Dragon Mancer in, and then late game you can potentially cut you know, a Kaisa for Yasuo. One thing um, that you do have to think about is that the Dragon Mancer buff scales with the star level of your Dragon Mancers, so sometimes cutting a two-star Kaisa for a one-star Yasuo, um, I mean it'll take a big chunk out of your Nunu's HP. That's something to think about as well. If you just have a one-star Yasuo and you don't have any items for it, sometime it, sometimes it is worse to actually cut a two-star unit for a one-star Yasuo, uh, which is really weird. But, you know, if you have a one-star Yasuo with no items and he's not really going to cast that much, uh, it can be better to just play everything two-starred and just chill on this board. Um, that's something to think about as well. Uh, now, this is a great board. Uh, this is a really good board. And if you hit three-star Nunu, three-star Voli, three-star Lee Sin, uh, this board can definitely win out. But I also wanted to show you guys... What I think is actually the strongest board, one of the strongest boards in the entire game, I have very rarely seen this board lose, um, and you can pivot to it from this board. So say you have 8 Dragon Mancer, you've pushed level 8, you only have a few new news, but you're really, really healthy, and you're winning a bunch of fights, and you're pretty wealthy, um, you think, okay, I can push 9 this game. Uh, what would be incredible for you to do is to push level 9 and pivot to an Ao Shin board with Ao Shin as the Dragon Mancer. Uh, if you guys haven't seen this board, it's it's absolutely disgusting because people just can't kill Aoshin fast enough. And he'll cast, especially at Aoshin 2, and just wipe out most of the board. Uh, even if he doesn't kill the entire board, with the two healing items that were on Nunu, they just cannot kill him fast enough. You also easily get Tempest in with Lee Sin, so it's really nice. Right now, I just have Hecarim in because 
is a really nice uh, sort of like splash CC unit. Um, but even more gross thing that you can do uh, if you have multiple Dragon Mancer spats. Um, and this is something that you can only play at level nine, right? Because with Aoshin, you can only fit in eight units at level nine. So you have to have, you have to be level nine to be able to play eight Dragon Mancer Aoshin. So this is really important. Um, but if uh, potentially you have two Dragon Mancer spats, then you can actually fit in Graves plus Kiana. Um, though, you know, you will have to cut, you know, say the Karma. Um, if you have two Dragon Mancers or three Dragon Mancer spats, then you can play this completely gross comp, which I don't know if this board can lose, honestly. As long as you have reasonable items and your augments aren't all useless, I don't think this board can lose. Um, so really, really insane board. This is a board that you can transition out of Nunu into. Um, there are a few other carries that can use Dragon Mancer spat. Well, Shivana is one that I've seen people play as well. So, you know, if you hit a Shivana too, you can think about it. Aoshin is the most straightforward and I would say the strongest way to pivot out of Nunu if you don't hit Nunu 3. Um, so this this is something to think about as well, but ideally you would play Aoshin. Um, and the thing with the Nunu board is like I said, if you're, oftentimes you want to push level 8 um, because if you have plus 1 Dragon Mancer, um, or if you have plus 2 Dragon Mancer, you can get 8 Dragon Mancer in and it's a very, very strong board. Um, so oftentimes with this comp, if you have 2 spats, it's just a fast 8 angle because getting in 8 Dragon Mancer is such a huge spike and then you can roll for Nunu on 8. Um, so really at that point it becomes the question of, okay, am I going to go level 9 or am I going to roll for Nunu 3? And if you have enough gold, it's better to hit Aoshin than Nunu 3 because Aoshin can just... We'll, we'll just insta-win you the game as long as you don't get it like zephyr or Shrouded or that kind of stuff. Um, or someone has like an insane board. Uh, another thing that you can do though um, is play, you know, just a very straightforward um, board like this. Um, and you don't have the second Dragon Mancer spat. Say this is a very average Dragon Mancer game. You can just play a board like this and roll it at 7 and 3 star everything. Uh, if you're low HP and you think, okay, I'm not going to be able to go level 8 and hit a bunch of good stuff. I can just play my 6 Dragon Mancer board, hit 3 star Nunu. And he's still going to do a lot of work. Um, but of course, the most capped board is something like this with a Dragon Mancer. Um, oh, also very important. Uh, I didn't realize this until recently. So if you watch my old Dragon Mancer Nunu video, I'm uh, I'm trying different things with like Nunu positioning. I'm trying like solo frontlining him, or you know, in the past I've tried something like this, where you know you just put your frontliners around Nunu so he's protected. Um, this is best Nunu positioning him in one of these corners like this or like this. Um, this is because. You don't really want him to get stuck on the front line. Um, so, you know, imagine, and I can actually pull up a builder, though I have to use a different website. Okay, so here is uh, the full team builder where I can actually put in an enemy team comp because I think this will be instructive. Uh, and I'll just, I'll only do our front line for now just to save time. So, you know, you have your Nunu, you have your set, uh, say Volley Baron Lisa, and say this is our front line for now. Um, and look at the, let's look at the enemy team. Say they're playing something like a Zaya comp. Um, so, you know, they'll have Zaya. And they'll have you know, a Hecarim and a Rakan. Um, some other fun stuff. Throw in a Jace as well as their other frontliner. This is simplified, of course, but, you know, you get the idea. Um, and they have them, you know, spread out something like this. Um, what, what can happen if you put Nunu in the middle is he's going to be stuck in the middle. And if he eats Jace, he's going to turn onto the Rakan. Um, the Hecarim, even if you position something like this, can potentially walk up here. And Nunu basically has to eat every single frontliner before he can come to the back line. Um, what can happen if you position um, more like this? Say we have the Hecarim as well, so our front line's a bit more spread out. Um, and say they even spread out their front line, just best case scenario. Nunu can walk up, eat Rakan, and then it's very possible, um, because these units are basically equally far out, uh, away, especially if uh, Zaya ends up walking up, Nunu can just run to the back line and eat Zaya and win you the fight. There's even situations where if they have like a solo front line, um, your your Nunu, uh, especially if you have like a Cavalier here, your Hecarim can walk up and then your Nunu can just fly to the back line and eat the Zaya. Um, so I, I think this is quite important to uh, keep Nunu on the side so that he can get to the back line as quickly as possible because that's really the only way that Nunu loses against comps like uh, Zaya. Uh, a big one that Nunu can lose to is like Deja. Uh, like with a spell sword variation, because Deja will scale up after attacking a bunch of times. Um, and so with that scaling, Nunu can eventually lose a, a long fight. Um, so that's just an important positioning caveat. Um, the other thing I wanted to go over with you guys um, is uh, augments, because, um, you know, these are very, very important to this comp. Um, there's a few that are obviously really good. Uh, you know, Dragon Mancer Crest is amazing. Earth's Grab Bag gives you a spatula, it's amazing. 
Uh, Ancient Archives is amazing, and there is something that I want to talk about with regard to Ancient Archives. So let's pull up another uh, Team Builder page, because um, this is really important. And I'll actually also pull up the Tome of Traits logic. Um, this is the item that you get uh, from Ancient Archives. It's a Tome of Traits. Um, it counts your synergies on the left, your active and inactive synergies. I guess left for you guys is this side. Um, so if you have five traits in, um, which let's do a quick example board, and I'm going to use these units uh, very um, purposefully. Let's put in Set. Let's put in Nidalee. Um, let's put in Zyra. Um, let's just do this, this three-unit board right now. So it's going to count our six traits over here and say, okay, you have six traits in. So I'm going to give you one tailored emblem and three random emblems. A tailored emblem includes one of these synergies. Now, this board is actually really, really nice because Tome of Traits can't give you emblems that don't exist in the game. And there are a few emblems that don't exist in the game. Astral doesn't exist, Ragewing doesn't exist, Shapeshifter doesn't exist, and Whispers doesn't exist. The other ones that don't exist are, uh, you know, like uh, Terra's trait Monolith, Dragon doesn't exist, but you know it's it's very difficult to get those guys in early. So what this does is it means that it's going to give you one tailored uh, tailored trait. Um, it's going to give you one tailored emblem here, basically. Uh, but it can't pick from Astral, Ragewing, Shapeshifter, or Whispers. That means it's a 50-50 shot for you to get Dragomancer or Evoker. Um, another thing that you can do if you want to really guarantee something decent is you can play these two. These two units are the best. They give you uh, Astral, Nidalee gives you Astral and Shapeshifter, which both you can't get. Uh, and Set gives you Rage Wing, which you can't get, and Dragomancer, which you do want. Um, you can easily do a board like this, where you throw Nunu in here, you get six in, and then your options become Cavalier, Dragomancer, or Mirage, all good. Um, you can also play a sort of Flex style uh, and play a Sejuani, um, if I could find her. And then you get these six in, uh, but you can only get Guild, Cavalier, Dragomancer. And so, you know, if you're comfortable playing flexible, you just pop your tome with these three units in, and then boom, uh, if you get a guild, you can just pivot to guild. And, you know, Cavalier can be this comp, or guild, or it can be uh, Mirages, and then Dragomancer is, of course, Dragomancer. You can also up uh, your likelihood by adding other units, um, because once you get to eight traits, um, you get two tailored emblems. Um, so if you add in other units, like say we added a Silas here, um, now we have in, we actually have in nine traits here because Silas adds um, mage in as well. So that's actually a bad, we, we should add Zyra back in. Um, game finder, yeah. Okay, so now if you add Zyra in, um, let's let's do the math. We're going to get two tailored emblems with eight traits in. Uh, the only things that we can get are Evoker, Dragomancer, Cavalier, and Guild. So now we're going to get two traits out of these four, which is actually a 50-50 shot. Um, so this is actually higher than if you were playing... Uh, you know, say something like this. It's it's in this situation only one and three, but you can only get, um, you know, you can get these three, which are all really good. Um, so there's that 50-50 shot there. But of course, you can also just get the 50-50 shot at six by doing this, uh, like I showed earlier. So this is really important for the Tome of Traits. You should make a board like this um, and then pop the Tome next round. And that's how it works. You have to wait on the next round. Uh, it's based on the previous round. So you play this board for one round and then pop your Tome next round. Really, really important if you're going to take that augment. Um, so let's, uh, let's get back into Augment. So that's really important. Uh, Hero in Training is actually a decent one. Uh, this is the one that gives you kind of like a baby Dragon Mancer. Um, that gains 50% of the bonus. It's not insane, but it's not terrible. And then outside of that, it's really just stuff to buff up, um, your board or just give Nunu more stuff that he can do. So Thrill is fine. Um, Baby Thrill is fine. Celestial Blessing is fine. Axiomark Mark is very, very good. Um, I can actually, nah, I don't want to sort by average placement. Um, a lot of very average ones like Second Wind. Ascension, something like an item grab bag you really don't want to take because, um, you know, there's a lot of items this this comp just can't use. Um, so really the the augments that you want to take uh, are the ones that give you plus one Dragon Mancer, very straightforward, um, and then things that can sort of buff Nunu's ability to play the game. So Thrill of the Hunt, Celestial Blessing, Axiom Arc, those kind of things. Um, so th those are the, the type of augments that are really strong for this comp. Um, and often you can get them early. Another really important thing is to be playing Dragon Mancer at 3-2 um, because your augments are affected by your board. You are not going to be able to get plus one Dragon Mancer if you're not playing Dragon Mancer at 3-2. So you really, like, if you don't have Dragon Mancer in at 3-2, I would not be playing this comp because uh, you lose out on the ability to get plus one Dragon Mancer. And then just one more point on the um, augments, I wanted to bring up uh, Tactics Set Tools augment stats um, just to show you how broken this comp is. If you look at the best augments to take on 2-1, the 
best one in the game is Dragon Dancer Crown, the best one in the game, uh, the fifth best in the game, and the second best uh, gold augment is Dragon Mancer um, Crest, I guess this is going to be. Um, so these augments that give you plus one Dragon Mancer are obviously insane um, because they just guarantee you Dragon Mancer. Um, you see these average placements, 3.48, 3.87. Those are, or that was for the wrong one, 3.85 even. Um, those are absolutely nuts. Uh, after the nerfs, I imagine these will go down a bit, uh, you know, maybe get a bit closer to four. But I mean, 3.5. Even if this goes down to like a 3.9, that is still very, very good. I mean, if you look at prismatics in the game, you know, even if this dropped to four, it would be one of the best still prismatics in the entire game. So this is why I'm making this guide for this comp, because I think it's still going to be fine. You're just going to need to know how to play it, um, because that's one of the biggest places people fall off. Um, so yeah, this, that's really the, the long and short of it. Um, I would say Yasuo itemization is important. Um, I mean, you can just use something like meta TFT. This is what I use to know like what items are really good on the units. Uh, Yasuo is also really a Cavalier spat holder, but you know, he really likes blue buff, Edge of Night, BT, Titans, that kind of stuff. Um, but that's really the long and short of it. If you guys have any questions about this comp, any of the boards that I showed, uh, or just any general questions about it, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I know some people have asked about counters for this comp. Um, so if you want to know how to counter it, I think there are a few things that are really important. Um, Giant Slayer, obviously really good because Nunu's gonna have a ton of HP. You're always gonna get this bonus damage versus him. Healing reduction is huge. Morellas or Sunfire can kill this comp. Another really important one is Edge of Night. Nunu can't one-shot an Edge of Night target. The uh, Edge of Night is going to shed that bite, basically. Um, so if you put Edge of Night on, say, your Graves carry, if you're playing uh, Cannoneers, it absolutely destroys Nunu. Um, so that's one really important. Another really funny one, actually, is Diamond Hands. Same idea as Edge of Night. Uh, if he tries to bite a, a unit and they haven't proc Diamond Hands, he's going to spit them back out. Uh, so if you have a Diamond Hands in the lobby, it can be really strong. Uh, and as far as comps that counter Nunu really hard, I actually think, uh, in my experience, I've found Scale Scorn to be a very tough matchup um, because, uh, one, their duo carry with Olaf and Diana. Um, this means that even if you bite the Olaf, the Diana can still kill your Nunu. Also, Pantheon very critically on his spell... Uh, he has healing reduction, which, like I was saying, healing reduction really important against Nunu. Um, uh, so in general, I think this comp is really annoying. I guess the other big thing is that they frontline a bunch of units, so it's actually, like, they can make it very hard for you to get to their Olaf by just putting him in a sea of frontliners. That's something that's really important. Um, but really, any comp that plays healing reduction, like, I've lost with this board to Lagoon comps because they built Morellos on uh, on their um, Soam. Uh, and it just applied it to my Nunu, and they had enough damage to get through my whole team. Um, another way to beat this comp is to just play a Yasuo. If you fight a really capped version of this comp, um, the only way to win, really, is to have Yasuo execute Nunu uh, with him being the last unit alive. The thing about Dragomancer is you're often putting all your eggs in the Nunu basket, and the rest of these units are kind of going to suck. Um, so if you can kill all the enemy units in the Nunu comp, and then you have a Yasuo that is alive, uh, if he does his third cast, he'll execute the Nunu, and you'll win. Okay, I know this video is getting long, so I will leave you guys with that. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please interact with the video in some way. Sub, like, comment, um, and check the link to my Twitch down below. Um, but yeah, appreciate it. I will catch you guys later. Bye.